Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for you. And it is for Friday, 21st day of September, 12th day of Tishrei. Here we go. Some very important uh, setup things for your lulav. When you set up your lulav with the species that go with it, it should look something like this. When you hold the lulav, the lulav should be the green part of the lulav facing to yourself, the part that looks like a little less beautiful. That's kind of like the back of the lulav, and that faces away from you. To the right, on the right side of your lulav, as it faces you, you should be placing three hadasim in, in that holder, on that side, and on what's to your left, as the lulav faces you, um, what should be placed there is uh, two aravos, and then the esrog is held kind of, well, it's certainly not bound together with the other, so it's kind of separate. You can hold your two hands together. And then the lulav, um, the lulav is holding the hadasim and aravos with it, as we just explained. The esrog is in your other hand, or you can hold them all together, but the esrog is not bound in with them. That's the proper placement of them. Other details for you to note is that when you put the hadasim and the aravos into the holder, you do have to be careful that you're not jamming them in so tightly into those holders that all of the leaves tear off. If all the leaves were to tear off, it would it would be problematic as to whether your hadasim and aravos are still kosher. So it's a good idea to try to widen the opening on those holders so that when you stuff, and you won't be stuffing, you'll just be gently putting your hadasim in there on the right side. None of the leaves hopefully will fall off. Try to do that if you can. And when you put the aravos into the left side, also same thing, try to um, make them such that none of the leaves are torn off. It is a good idea for the lulav to stick out at least a tefach, that's about four inches, past the hadasim. It is good if you can arrange it such that the hadasim are a little bit higher than the aravos. So it would be lulav highest, then hadasim, and then it, this this is not like if the hadasim and aravos are a little close it won't kill your lulav, but just the prime, prime setup is lulav of course the highest, hadasim a little higher than the aravos, and uh, Estrog uh, is in a separate hand. While I'm on that, I'll just mention quickly, it's a, it's a beautiful symbolism. You know, the Estrog is sometimes viewed as the symbol of the, the Jew who's most perfect. Um, you know why? Because the Estrog is the thing that has beautiful smell and beautiful taste. None of the other three species can claim that. He's the... Uh, He's the symbol of the tzaddik, you know, the one who's filled with Torah and also filled with mitzvot most perfectly, beautiful smell, beautiful taste. And that, that esrog, that tzaddik man, if you'll excuse me calling him that, that tzaddik man is separate and above and higher than all the others, and yet he's still brought together with all the other kinds of Jews. That's another part of the beautiful symbolism in, in how you're, you're holding your esrog and your lulav. Hope that made sense. Um, thanks for logging on. Have a great Shabbos. And then log in and again on Sunday when we'll have one more chance to tell you some uh, halachas for Sukkot just before uh, Sukkot starts. Good Shabbos. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye.